<laughs> okay, let's see here. I think we're we're live, yes. Okay, so let me just double check that we're live. And hello everybody. I'm excited to be joining you. And um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be learning about um, roti from my mother-in-law. So Dolly Such Dave is with us and we're really excited to be uh, sharing this time together. And um, come on in. So here we are. Dolly and I are sharing the kitchen. And so what we're gonna do today is really exciting. We're gonna make um, roti, which is the Indian flatbread. And we're kind of trying out some new technology. So if you're just joining us, go ahead and put hashtag live and sounds okay. And um, you know, be sure to like this, heart this, share this with any friends who you think might want to learn this with us. Um, we're really excited about the topic today because it's sharing something that's really a staple in um, South Asian households. My husband's mom's been making it for him since North when? North Indian. No, oh, North Indian, sorry. <laughs> so um, this is something that we've been cooking in our house here for your whole life yeah forever, yes. forever. <laughs> so we've got some new technology which is kind of exciting mm -hmm. and um let's see here if i can oh it says broadcast interrupted i don't know can you guys hear me sorry we're t we're sort of figuring this out here with the technology is it oh okay it is live <laughs> sorry there we go all right so let me just refresh my screen we'll get there all right, so we're going to be making roti today, and we're here with Dolly, and we're doing North Indian cooking. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get it straight. Um, Punjabi cooking. Punjabi cooking. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start, so the basics of what we're going to do today are a dal and roti, which is the flatbed, and mm -hmm. what else? And then we make a paranta. A paranta, and what is paranta? Paranta is the stuffed uh, gobi. Yeah. And you can do it with the gobi, like a cauliflower, or you can do it potato, or you can do it with anything. You can do it with the paneer, you know, shred the paneer and you can sort it and then you can put it in there. That's amazing. Yeah. You can so do you have, does, does your son have a favorite? What would you say? Gobi paratha is his favorite. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so gobi is cauliflower. So oftentimes when we come home, we always come home and there's a little gobi pranta waiting for us, which is super exciting for all of us. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do first is start um, cooking a yellow dal. And this is split mung. And um, no, it's a mung dal. Mung dal, yes. Mung dal. But it's split. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the split mung dal. And it's got a, um, it's been rinsed so that some of the particulate matter kind of comes off. And here we go, guys. We've got this kind of new uh, technology. Hopefully it's going to work out for us. And we're going to fill the pan. It's about a cup of the split mung dal. And we're going to fill the pan. And we're going to just put this on the stove. It's actually pretty straightforward. Fill it up with water. You want to show us a picture of that? So we're going to just... Uh, Come on over here, and we've got that coming, so you can see, kind of exciting. Like I said, we're trying new things here in the kitchen today. And so um, what we're going to do is start the dal, and what that is is just split mung. We've rinsed it, and now we put about two cups of water with it, maybe a cup and a half. And now we're going to put the spices in. So we've got Himalayan salt, and um, we've got a... a ground coriander, so that's about a teaspoon, and about a teaspoon of turmeric, maybe a little less, half teaspoon. <laughs> it's different every time. This is about a half teaspoon of paprika, and, oh, maybe a little more, and this is black pepper. So we've got about a half teaspoon of black pepper. So we're just throwing this all into the stove, which is gonna give us this really rich and savory kind of experience, which we're pretty excited about. And so that's awesome. So how often do you make dal? Is that a staple here in the home? Yeah, we used to do once a week. Yeah, at least once a once week, week, right? Week, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what other kinds of dals do you make? Do you use different? We have a mung dal, we have a chana dal, and then we have a black split dal. Uh -huh. And then we have a black chana, we have a rabanzu beans. Yeah. 
So I think what I'm hearing is that there's sort of an endless array of legumes you can yes. make dal with, right? So sometimes people ask me, like, is this the right um, legume? Can I use a different uh, can I use a different legume with this recipe? And I always say, yeah, absolutely. Anything that you have at home will work. And do you ever put chilies into the dal? Uh, yes, we can. We can put the whole chili for flavor. Oh, okay. That's a green chili. So we can but put the whole chili. But if you want a cut up chili, then uh, it will give you even more flavor. More, flavor. <laughs> more heat. More heat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And how about ginger? Do you put ginger in the uh, dal? I, you can put a ginger right away in the dal. Onion in the dal and the tomatoes, or uh -huh. you can saute it at the end and then put it on there. It's so you can see here we've got ginger in kind of two different ways. We have this ginger is for 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 gopi. Okay, for that gopi, stays yeah. there. <laughs> but can this go in the dal? Let's go in the dal. And at what point do we put that in? Uh, you can put a two tablespoon. Okay, should we do that now? Yes, we can. Do All that. right, let's do that. I'll do that real quick. And we'll just throw that in. Okay, so we're just going to stir that up. And you can see by the time we're done making the roti, the dal will be basically done. So again, this is a split mung, yellow dal. It's looking pretty good already. It smells delicious. Okay, and are we going to put a little onion in too? Yeah, you can put an onion. Okay, so it's pretty flexible. These recipes for dal are pretty forgiving. So we'll put maybe a tablespoon of red onion. Mm -hmm. And now we can just kind of let that cook for a bit. All right, mm -hmm. now, so hey everybody, so excited everyone who's joining and um, sharing this time together. So again, let's just take a look here. Um, okay, so now what are we making? Now we're gonna uh, make a dough. Okay, let's so make the dough. So this is a two cup of... Uh, I'm gonna uh, let you be front and center here. <laughs> this is a two cup of uh, the wheat flour. Uh huh. So what I'm gonna do with... Uh, I'm going to add a... So here's the interesting thing about how this um, particular mixture works. If any of you have ever done French cooking or um, baking, you may find that um, flour is done by weight, not necessarily by measurement. And so um, Dolly does it by feel. And so the important thing to remember here is that you'll find recipes, but oftentimes the water content of uh, flour varies and so that's why sometimes it's better to do it by weight and so again this is something to kind of look at and why don't we let's have you scoot in over here so we can get a good look at that dough yes. and so what she's doing is she's just sort of mixing it by hand and um, you can do it in a food processor yeah. too yeah so let's show you all kind of what that dough looks like there we go and um, so you can see here, it's a little bit sticky. And so how do you know when it's done? It's just the feel of it. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's just the feel. It's so the she feel. was teaching me last night what that feel is. And so we put in about, this was two cups of flour, and we put in about a cup of water so far. Uh, less, than, less than that. You less put a half first, and then you go by the... Okay. How you feel about it. So, so half cup of water, and then you'll see she pours that little bit of water on her hands. And then I knead it. And then she kneads it. And what's interesting is that the dough starts to take shape here. And it almost is a sticky dough for those of you that do a lot of baking. And we haven't even put any salt in this, have nope, we? nothing. Nothing. So is this just water and flour? Now notice that the dough is getting a little springy here. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it. So at this stage, we're going to put just a little bit of oil, oil to make it smooth. To help make it smooth, again, <clears throat> this is something that we have expert hands showing us. When you try this at home, it may not kind of come together quite as easily. But we're just going to knead it, and usually it's a couple minutes of kneading, right? Yeah, and then you can put your finger in there and see it doesn't stick out or anything. Okay, so when we put our finger in, the dough has a little bit of give back. So again, but also it's not sticking to my finger. So it's dry enough that it's not sticking to your finger, but it's not so uh, wet that it's, um, yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> what I said. So um, here we go. Alrighty. So, and the funny thing is, is like, I think if you work with doughs and you work with things like this over time, 
you do really just sort of learn that the dough has a particular um, texture to it, if you will. And so the first few times you might try and make these, you may find that you're, you know, you're, it was a little dry, it was a little too wet, but you can see here, you know, we don't have much flour. It is just to give you a sense of the texture. Again, so then the stage here, what's next from here? So this you can, if you want to cook, make roti with this, you can do it right away or you can wait it for a, for a half an hour or so because if you make it right away, the texture of the roti will come a little different. But if you keep it for a while, but then the, the texture of the roti will come differently. So this one is, we just made it, but we had, we made it last night. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is pull out the one that we had already made. We let it sit in the fridge overnight, which is exciting. And um, actually, so this can stay in the refrigerator for three, four, five days, no problem at all. Okay. Yeah. So we, so the idea here is that you can make one batch, and it can last you through the week, right? You can just pull off the dough as you need it. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, I don't know what, what you all are thinking, those of you that have never made roti before. But from my standpoint, this is pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Easy. <laughs> so it just takes a matter of practice. So now we've got some dough we're going to pull out. And uh, Dolly made this. Um, we can see here. We've got a handprint in it. <laughs> kind of reminds me of those, um, you know, those things we did as a child. So to really get our hands in this. It feels good, yeah. I think. You know, sometimes when we really put our hands into food, it really just sort of um, wakes up our senses and brings that awareness to us. So I think it's pretty exciting. So we got a question here about yeah. um, what kind of flour is used? Yes. Oh, so for those of you that are just joining, what we're doing today is we're making dal, roti, and stuffed uh, stuffed flatbread, which is called branta. Did I say that right? Yep. Okay. And so um, the whole wheat flour is what we're using. If, if anybody is interested in a gluten-free recipe, there is a pretty good looking one I found using sorghum and cassava flour, which it sounds like it'll come across pretty similarly to the texture and the taste, because it's really the gluten that gives that binding, that gives that stickiness for the dough to stay together when we're rolling it. However, um, we know now that there are genuinely are people who just don't tolerate um, the gluten protein. So, um, you know, exactly. That's one of the things we want to think about. Oops. Hey, no, that's on screen. Hi, <laughs> Hi Beth. We're, we're learning new technology today. <laughs> Roger that. Okay. Any rate. Um, okay, so let's let you get started here. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're thinking about the <laughs> we're, th we're thinking about how to get this dough exactly into the next sort of process. So we've let that dough, so this is whole wheat dough and water, and that's the beautiful thing about roti and the flatbreads is that they're really straightforward, and and wheat is something that we're definitely learning. Some people can digest, and other people just can't so easily. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in this household, we do just fine with wheat at the moment. Nobody is gluten-free, although we've all had our iterations of being gluten-free, seeing how that went for our digestion. Okay, so take us through the next step. So we are going to go more here. So, so we're gonna switch cameras here. <laughs> so, what is this, a flatbread? Yeah. This is a tawa. So I just heat it up on a food. And then I'm going to, so this is a, dry flour. This is a place that we can roll it and this is a rolling pin. And if you don't have a rolling pin, you can always use a bottle or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a big little bit and dry flour and go by by the volume and then I just go just do like this and make it a round ball. Just use a round ball okay. and then put it in here. And then I'm going to just press it a little bit harder, and then I'm going to roll it. So if it sticks to on it, I'm going to put a little bit more dry flour. Oops. That happens. 
So what kind of roller are you using? Right? That's a rolling pin. Oh, oh with one? Yeah. Yeah, cool. And I'm going to just put it on Okay. Just like that. Just and like let's that. take a look at what's happening with the doll here real quick. Yeah. So we need to add more water. So we'll add a little extra water to the doll. And we'll just do that here. Again, it's sort of just being in the kitchen and having an eye for it. Um, we needed more water just to keep it so that the um, it doesn't dry out while it's cooking. And then you end up with a little layer of burnt legumes on the bottom and <laughs> edible legumes on the top, which we've never done in our home, right? <laughs> All right, so, so let's see what's happening here. So this is what we've done is this is whole wheat flour? Yeah, or it's a whole wheat flour, same okay. flour. So it's the exact same flour. Mm -hmm. This sat overnight, mm -hmm. and it was really just water and whole wheat flour. And it gets a nice sort of springy texture. Mm -hmm. And then now show us the technique here. This is the secret sauce. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is what takes a lifetime so to do. This is a plain roti. So we're going to make sure it's not done. It's, uh, you can use this one too. You don't have to use your fingers. Your kitchen fingers. Kitchen fingers. <laughs> That's what so, hubby always calls them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn it, and then we, um, I have this one that we use it to make it, let it, see, it becomes like this. Uh -huh. So you create little air vents, basically, yeah. and puncture it's it just a, a little bit. No, it don't, see? Ah. If I press that one, it fills up with the air. Ah, interesting. Okay. Does filling up with the air give it a special quality? Uh, this means it's cooked. Gotcha. Okay. And this means you're very hungry. <laughs> it means why isn't the doll ready yet? <laughs> so we need to have that just a little bit more. So the fun thing about this is that it's really pretty straightforward once you get the hang of how the dough needs to feel yeah. when you're making it. Yeah. So, so this is done. So what I'm going to do is make it a front meat. Okay. So I'm going to see. So um, this is a uh, butter. I'm going to put a little bit butter on there. A little bit. It's a key, right? It's the a key, yeah. butter. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of uh, salt. A little bit of salt. And then put a little chuan on it. Oh, here we go. So now what we're doing is we're going to add some seeds. Yeah. So this is ajuan, which is okay, ajuan. often used in Ayurvedic cooking yeah. as well. With, you can put it according to your taste. Okay. So I'm going to fold it like this in half and press it and fold this side one more time and I'll fold this side and then fold this side. So this makes it a stir. That's uh, So this yes. is the technique for folding yes. flavor in, so right? I'm going to put it in here and then I'm going to roll it. And you kind of spin it almost as you roll it, right? Yeah, you can. So this is the just a plain prata with with just a chuan and salt in there. Gotcha. So this is done. So that's so just a regular roti. Yeah. I'm going to cook it and I'm going to do it like this. So you can put a butter on it, the ghee on it, and it's ready to eat. Oh boy, <laughs> that is a real treat. <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're cooking the one with ajuan. So the thing is, is you can actually put uh, any number of spices that might yes, appeal you to can. you. you can. So you Anything can do you ginger, want. cilantro. Yeah, you can. It's all your taste, but this is the simple way of doing it. Okay. You don't have to chop anything. Or right, just, just throw the seeds just, in. Just and it. if you missed it, we did like a, a folding technique where we folded the edges mm -hmm. and then flattened it and rolled it out again. Yeah, that's it. That's it? Yeah. And so this one. So does that one take any longer to cook, or is it no, the same it time? No, it is the same amount, but it's a, it's a little bit different. I can, if you want, you can fry it on there, or you can fry it later. You can put a butter later on, or ghee later on. So I'm going to fry it here just like it won't heat. Oh, that is looking delicious here. So if okay. you're fully plant-based, you could use a little bit of olive oil or coconut oil in the same roll that yeah. the ghee is being used. Yeah. And um, this is a, just a piece of wood, right? Yeah, this Beautiful is a piece of wood. Piece yeah. wood. Mm -hmm. Any special significance no, to that? No, you can do it on the on here too. You can or do it you on can your do counter. It on the cutting board too. It's pretty flexible as long yes. as you have a little flower down yeah. underneath, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, this is the Achuan roti. 
or this is the Paranta, right? Paranti. Paranti. Okay, so singular is Paranti, right? Sure. <laughs> I'm learning the terminology clearly. <laughs> so, so you can it's ready to eat. Oh, See, boy. all the sides are done. See? I'm ready to eat. You can put a ghee on this side too, or oil on this side. See that unless it doesn't have a butter, but if you want, you can do it. And so, for those of you that are gluten free, I'll definitely be posting a link here in this chat box that'll give us a sense of how to make this recipe if you're completely gluten free, yeah. and it's basically using cassava and sorghum flour. So this is ready to eat. It's ready to eat. Mm -hmm. So do you say that you try to do you try to cook them right at the time you're eating? Yeah, you can eat it, or you can. Cook it and put it on the side and eat it later on too. You can warm up in the toaster oven or on the stove or on the flat. On the flat toaster. surface? Yeah, <laughs> so it's pretty easy actually. You can make a batch at a time. Yes. So like a flow in the kitchen might be make your dough every four or five days yes. and make a batch every two to three days. Oh, you can. Or oh, you can day. make it fresh every day. Yeah, it doesn't take too long no, once you get the hang of it. No. All right. Okay. And the temperature for the stove, how high I, I put it, it on a high at the beginning to make this uh, higher, and then I make it like a um, little bit lower okay. on the number eight or something like that. Okay, so, so it's a pretty hot stove. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Yeah. Now we talked about something called tandoori roti, mm -hmm. and what's that? That we make it in the oven on a broiler. Okay, and, and that's a that pretty high. A, that's a tricky one. Though. Yeah. So you have to let the broiler go on for a few minutes, and then you put it in the roti in there, but it's, you have to take it out carefully because it can burn yes. very quickly. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. So this does need a high heat. So one of the things that I think is nice about the way you're showing us is that there's not a lot of oil on this pan because the high heat will denature the oil and it won't feel so good when you eat yeah. it. So we try to put the oil on after the cooking pretty much. Yep which I think is a really smart way to do it. Mm -hmm. So we're just using a basic nonstick pan. Non you could yeah. use cast iron or whatever you have at mm -hmm. home. Yeah. But it's a higher heat. Yeah. And is mm -hmm. there any way you know for sure when the heat's ready to put the roti on? You can uh, feel it like that, your hand is on there. So. Yeah, it's sort of like a, whoa, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Make sure you don't burn it. That's right, okay. So yeah. Yes, do not put your hand mm -hmm. on the pot. <laughs> Clarification. All right, so let's take a look here at what's happening with the doll. Excuse me. And then we're going to do the stuffed, um, using the same dough to make a stuffed, um, the stuffed version. Yeah. And when it's the stuffed version, it's called paranta. Is that correct? Yeah. So you can see here, this is just the split moon. And what we've added to this is turmeric, black pepper, um, uh, coriander, crushed coriander and uh, ginger. We could put a, pil a, a, hot, a little miniature green chili, but I elected to put that on hold. And uh, those of you that know me know that heat really just is tough for me. So there's that. Oh, and a little bit of red onion. So this will take about the same amount of time it takes to cook everything. So what's really tasty is when you can have all this together. And sometimes people say, I'll have roti without rice. You know, you just have your dal and roti. So again, there's different ways of making this. Yes. Okay, so what are we on to now? Okay, so this is a, this fresh gobi, cauliflower. So I, you can, I usually wash it uh, for a half an hour to 45 minutes. Otherwise, if you wash it and grate it or make a roti like that, then the water will come in there. So let it rinse and then put it away. And then either you can grate it, you can take a cauliflower, like break it like this, you can grate it. So the idea here is that we want to rinse the cauliflower. If you think about this, if you're cleaning the cauliflower, it's not straight from your garden, the water can get all caught up in all these beautiful little um, portions of the cauliflower. And when that happens, it stores water. So we want to drain the cauliflower for at least 45 minutes after you've washed it so that the water content from that rinsing doesn't end up um, sort of diluting or making the dough soggy. 
Okay. So we've got the grated cauliflower. So you, grate, you can grate it or you can put it in a chopper. Too. Yeah, a food processor, awesome. even a blender you can yeah. throw it in. You can, but make sure you watch it, otherwise it's become very soggy. Okay. So you have to watch it, how it goes. So this is already grated. I'm going to add more to it. So we've got about two cups of grated cauliflower. I'll post a recipe or a version of a recipe. Okay. <laughs> and then you can put it... We've got a little bit of salt we're going to add. And you can see how quickly we're moving through this recipe. It's pretty straightforward. And this is going to be toasted cumin. So this is also, when you toast cumin, it kind of brings the flavor out. So it's toasted over a dry heat. This is about a teaspoon of toasted cumin or jira. Yep. And then we've got, which one is this? This is a pomegranate seeds. So pomegranate seeds, which if you've been cooking along with me a little bit, you know we've been using some of these ingredients. And um, I love that Dolly uses old coffee jars for her spices. I think it's a great way to buy sp spices in bulk because once you start cooking in this fashion, you're going to find that you love having a place to put all your spices. This is amchur. So this is amchur, which is the dried um, mango. mango. And then so this is looking pretty good already. And some of you, you know, one of the things to know here is that a lot of people are using cauliflower in lieu of rice. So you steam it gently and then have cauliflower instead of rice. It's a low carbohydrate option. But here we've got coriander. And if you want the black pepper, that's your choice. Little black pepper. And that's paprika. Little paprika. And you want to put a, a little turmeric, sure. Yeah, yeah, let's bring and the turmeric. Let's put a little bit more salt on it. All right. This is looking. Oh, it smells so good here, everyone. I wish we weren't in quarantine times. We'd invite people in Phoenix over to share some of the meals that we're making. And don't forget the ajuan. Oh, definitely don't forget the ajuan. Okay. And then we can have um, ginger. Oh boy. Okay, so we got about a tablespoon of ginger going in, grated and ginger. And then we're going to coriander. And about, uh, oops, we're frozen. wonder what happened. Is it going to go? Oh, there it goes. Okay, we got frozen there. So we have a little bit of cilantro. And onion is it optional. Let's put a little onion in. That sounds okay. delicious. Dori, dori. <laughs> So onion, so now I, I know we didn't talk about this before we started filming, but if someone was to go to a Sikh Gurdwara, is it often that you would find food like roti and dal being served after the um, time that everyone spends together? Yeah, they do. They and do. what is that meal called? Langar. Langar. And the Golden Temple in India, they serve the langar yeah, to 24 hours. 24 hours a day. They say mm -hmm. thousands and thousands Thousand of people. people. And typically in a Sikh uh, gurdwara or temple, if you will, you'll if you go after the services, there's always a free meal. Yes, always. There's always a meal. So this is a big part of the Sikh faith is to um, think about people who have hunger. And dal and roti is actually a very um, nutritionally balanced option. And so it's what many people across the globe eat yes. as, a, as sort of a staple in their home. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing about it is that it's actually a pretty well-balanced, healthy, and then you bring in all these other wonderful ingredients, and suddenly you've got this beautiful flavor. Yeah. So sorry for that little divergent okay. moment, but I wanted to just point that out. So here you can see we've got cilantro, salt, pepper, um, uh, coriander, coriander um, amchur. amchur, and, and ajwan. Am I'll write it all out, guys. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> it's smelling very good here. So let's get an update on the doll. Yes, we'll put this on. So we've got this doll is just about nearing done. And you can imagine here, if you had about a half hour, you could pull this meal together. We're just doing a little bit of teaching and talking as we go. So again, you can see here, usually what I tell people is the doll is done when it tastes done. Every stove, every kind of combination seems a little different in terms of the heat. So let's get out of the way here and take a look at what's happening. <laughs> All right, so now what we've got is the same dough that we started with, which is just your basic dough, which was water and whole wheat flour. 
and we're rolling it into, are we doing two yeah, separate? Yeah, we're making it two because the, it's very small. It's not that big. I gotcha. But a roti is half of that. This becomes one roti actually. Oh, got it. So, okay. So we just roll it. It's easier for me to make it like that. You can make it in a one, two. In one roti, make it. And then, so. so then mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. I'm eating one of the Antoine roti. <laughs> it's so okay. good. Yeah. I couldn't wait. Mm. And then I have to get the one on the top, and then I'm going to press the corners. Mmm. That is looking so good. Mmm. Then I'm going to put more flour on it. Right on it. And put the right on it. So what we're making now is the stuffed paranta. And this is stuffed with a cauliflower mixture, if you're just joining us. So I'm just rolling this way and this way. I don't turn it, so it's ready to go. We'll show you more than once, so you can get the hang of it. And then we just throw that on the stove, just like we had for the roti. Yes. So while that's cooking, we'll, t we'll watch Bali make another one, because that was some pretty mad skills. <laughs> that is not something you learn overnight. So we're rolling out the dough, and these are slightly smaller than what the roti is. Yes. And that's the key here, because ultimately it's going to be two of these together that creates the stuffed, um, the stuffed version. What kind of stuffings do you put into this? What are all the options? Is it sort of endless? You can do... Um, um boil potato and mash it uh -huh. and then add all the spices in there and then you stuff it in there. And carrot I think we talked about and radish like okay. daikon. Yeah make sure there's no water content in there. The okay. carrots will have a water content so make sure you take the water content out you know before you. So eat. you might grate the carrots grate and the then carrots squeeze and them? Squeeze it in. Okay so okay. that's pretty cool guys so you could figure out all kinds of different stuff. You can stuff. put any vegetables in there as long as it's not too watery and it has to be a little bit. Yeah, the dough gets soggy, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh boy, smelling good here. So I'm going to put this on the top and press the corners. So you can see we created two rolled smaller sort of medallions, or about four inches each. And then we put the filling in the middle and then we kind of press down on the edges to seal it. A little flour on top. And then we roll that flat, but we don't roll it too too aggressively, right? Yeah, it's a softly. gentle roll. I just want to, I don't want to turn it. I'm just going to be rolling this way, this way, so that, that it can come. Make it doesn't break. Gotcha. Make sure this nothing sticks sticky on it. Otherwise, it's going to be make a mess. Okay, so what do I going to do? I'm going to put a, either you could put a key or you can put a oil on it. And then I'm going to put this on this side. Side is already cooked. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have a cameraman after this segment, so <laughs> somebody's excited. <laughs> this is so fun. You can put it on this side too if you want. It's just your personal preference actually. You don't need to put a ghee on it, you can just cook it like this and then put a ghee extra. Oh, oh yeah, boy, that it. looks great. It's a <laughs> we're going to get a plate to put this on because it's done and we're going to be ready to cook the next one. Thank you. Okay. All right. That is looking really fantastic. And let's check on the doll. Let's see how this doll is coming along. All right. So the doll is just about done. We're going to sort of do a little taster. What do you think, Dolly? Is that, yeah, is that it's done. We can put tomato in there. All right. We're going to put a little bit of tomato in here at the end. All right. Perfect. And then we'll let it cook another five yeah, minutes or so. Yeah. We can add a little bit more water. Okay. A little bit more water. So we don't want it. When I was stirring the spoon, the spoon here, I sort of feel a little bit of the doll sticking at the bottom of the pan. So we want to just be sure that it stays liquid enough. 
that it doesn't burn. So. And this could be a, a really a full meal with dal yeah. and the stuffed roti, right? Yeah, well, husband says yes. <laughs> stuffed roti you can eat with the um, mango pickle or any kind of pickle, or you can eat it with the plain yogurt. Oh, fantastic. Or so you, you can, can eat it, you can put something in there, or whichever the taste you want to do it. You can eat with another vegetable, you can eat with the dal. It's all for personal preference. It's all personal preference. So there's lots of good options. Are there any questions? I'd love to hear from anybody who might have a question and kind of how our technique is. Let me just take a look. So we've got, um, yeah, we've got some folks hanging out. Be sure to share this with a friend who you think might be interested. And um, we'll just, uh, do you need to? <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at what's happening here on the pan. And uh, I'm gonna just flip this over again. It's looking like it's cooking so nicely. We're gonna put a little bit of ghee on this. And just like that. Oh boy. Pretty tasty, guys. And again, you could use coconut oil or olive oil if you're entirely plant-based. Let me just flip that over. And a little bit more ghee. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Any sweet versions? You uh -huh. can add sugar. You can add, so of course you, you can. can. With the pronti we made with the ajuan, uh -huh. instead of putting ajuan, you can add sugar on it. Maybe sugar, cinnamon, and cardamom. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Even some rose petals mm -hmm. if you're feeling fancy. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, so how, how long do you think this dough would last, generally speaking? It will last me for four days. About four days. Mm -hmm. So are you willing to let me try? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk me through this entirely? Okay. So I got a little bit of dough and it's smaller, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you so want to make a bronte or do you want to make a stuffed Let's make a stuffed one. Okay. Yeah. yeah so okay, so it's about yeah. half dollar size. A little, little bit less than that. A little less than this? No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I put a little dough on my hand or a little flour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And make it round. Make it round. Mm -hmm. Gonna put a little flour mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I roll it. Make sure when you roll the, the top, make sure that it has a dry flour. Oh, on. gotcha. So you flip it, yeah, over. flip it over. Yeah, we're getting all the nuances here yeah. now. Okay, so, and we turn it a little bit as we go. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And do upside down because of the flour. Oh, right. So we want to flip it over as we go. Okay. You can do that. Yeah. All right. So we've okay. got a little, little more flour on this surface. All right. Okay, and so we've got one that's kind of rolled out here. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to do my next one. So again, it's about, um, gosh, it's about a tablespoon of dough, I would say. So I'm going to roll this into a circle. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. All right, and then I'm going to make sure that we've got enough flour on the surface. So kind of pat it out a couple times. Yeah, get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we'll roll this out. And again, we'll flip it maybe once or twice. Mm -hmm. And I got ambitious. I wanted to make paranta from the beginning, huh? <laughs> All right. So we just make sure that the dough isn't sticky. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. this looks pretty good. All right. So um, about a tablespoon, you would say? No, or just tell me when. Speed it. Okay, so yeah, I would say fine. I would say that's about yeah. um, a tablespoon and a half, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take this dough and press, the press all around the edges so that it kind of gets sealed in there. A little bit of flour on top. Press it, press it with my fingers. Yeah. Okay. And even if you don't want to roll it, you can just press it and then ah, put it on there. Got too. it. So it's a gentle roll. Though. Yeah, gentle roll. Okay. That's not quite That's yet. okay. Mm. That's why it's when there is the water, then it will come out like this. Ah, okay. Well, guys, this is the first one I've ever made. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. <laughs> we'll put it right here. Yeah, that's it. 
All right, yeah. so that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Thank you for talking me through that. Yeah. I'm gonna wash my hands here. So now mm -hmm. let's talk about different ways we might serve this and see if we yeah. have any questions. Yeah. yeah, so these are really fun, guys. We've been having a lot of fun here trying to just create some connection here in the kitchen. And what is this hand that's coming in taking food? Here we go. <laughs> So we know that my husband loves, loves, loves his mom's cooking. And so um, we're certainly not becoming experts in, in um, North Indian cooking and on my part, but I'm learning a lot of these wonderful dishes and how to make them. And it's been a really a treasure to be doing that. So let's see what's happening. Is this doll? You think the doll is about ready? Yeah, that is ready. All right. Um, we can put it. Um so we put maybe a little cilantro you can, in at the end? Yeah, you can actually season with uh, cumin seeds. Oh, It's yeah. up to you, but I'm putting a garam masala. Okay, so a little garam masala. masala at the end, which that has kind of a, a bit of a tang to it, right? It has yeah. cinnamon and different spices. I know, a little bit of Okay, a little heat. Let's we'll get those fat-soluble vitamins now. Yeah. And okay. then we can put a coriander. And then we'll put the cilantro, so the coriander. In. Here we go. Oh boy, that would be so good and vibrant. Okay. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be able to be filming, but <laughs> this is smelling really good. So you can see, if you were making this at home, you would be able to sort of start your doll, start that cooking process, and um, if you already have made the roti dough mixture, which if you're just tuning in here towards the end, we're making dal, roti, and paranta. So the paranta is the stuff, basically it's the roti dough that's got a stuffing between it. And sometimes this is made in a tandoori oven, and say you're eating out, you might have it that way. But um, again, this is something that's a real staple, and um, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be something that's consumed very shortly. <laughs> They're very popular in this house, and we had said at the beginning that Gobi Paranta is um, my husband's favorite, so he's always a good sport helping us film, and his mom's been so gracious letting us be in the kitchen. Let's take a look and see if we have any questions. Um, okay, so let's talk about how we might serve this. So we've got the, we have the roti, we have the Ajuman. So we kind of did a couple of different things today. We did, we learned how to make the dough. So the dough is basically water and whole wheat flour to a particular touch. So if you're just tuning in now, you might circle back after this video is uploaded and get the technique a little bit more clarified. But it's really a dough that has, um, it's really to, to the texture of the dough. We want the dough to be sort of um, springy to the touch. Um, but it's not quite the same as, say, a pizza dough because there's no yeast in it. So it's an unleavened bread. And then we, um, we made a plain one, so we just rolled it out. And typically we let the dough sit overnight. And that gives that gluten time to sort of connect. And it makes the dough sort of more, um, it, it brings it together in a better way. The alternative here is that you can also put seeds or other spices into the roti. And that is then the beginning of called paranti, right? Paranti. That's when there's some sort of stuffing in it. And then we have paranta, which is when there's the two pieces that come together with the stuffing in the middle. And today we made a particular stuffing. Yes, okay, so um, let's see here. Okay, so let's, add, I'm gonna answer some of these questions, but today we made the, um, the uh, paranta with stuffed cauliflower mixture, which is a really just, it's so tasty. We had um, ajuan and, and cumin, coriander, uh, mango powder, pomegranate seeds, and um, some spices. We haven't put any green, uh, green chilies in anything, because that's a little heating for me, but we did put some red pepper and ginger and cilantro into the mixture. So, Let's go do let's go do the um, kitchen cam here for a sec and see what's happening, and we'll answer some of these questions as they come up. So where you're just making a whole thing, you're just making matches because what yeah. family's coming over, right? Yeah. So there's some expectation that they're going to get to share this. So um, the question is here: Can you put greens inside the roti? Are they too wet? 
Do you have to really cook, maybe blanch them or boil them a bit first? Yeah, you can, um, actually you can chop it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the, the spinach is very easy to cook. Yeah. You can chop it. Okay, actually another thing is that instead of putting in stuff it, before you knead the flour, you can chop all the greens uh -huh. and then add it to that. Oh. And then uh, put the salt, pepper, whatever you need to do it and okay. make it green roti instead of a oh. plain roti. That's a kind of a fun way to add some extra yeah. nutrition to it. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> so you would take the greens, would you cook them at all? No, you don't put it, you just blend it. You know, just, just blend it, so chop the greens really finely? Yeah, fine, very finely. And then you've got that with your whole wheat flour? Add it to the whole wheat flour and you before just you add water. Before the water, mm -hmm. ah, clever. Okay, so, so that, that sometimes the water you comes out of the greens. It. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you would inevitably, if you're making the roti with greens, you would do a little less water because you've added the roti right directly in. So I hope that um, clarifies that question. You could probably put them inside, but I would recommend that you blanch them and squeeze out the water, and then, then you, you can place it. Yeah. The idea here is that we just don't want the dough to get soggy. So again, um, this is really exciting, and we're just kind of working on getting everything together. And so ways you can serve this is just plain with a little bit of dal. You could also have it with fresh greens, right? Yeah, you can have it. So let's talk a little bit about an adventure that uh, Amrab and I had yesterday. We found ourselves at a biodynamic farm. And this is a really amazing way of growing and creating food. And it's called Blossom Biodynamic Farm. And um, really just gorgeous um, produce and we had a big adventure so I'm just going to pull those greens out from the fridge all right and we also made sag yesterday in the Ayurveda course that I'm cooking so if you're not familiar, I do have a Facebook group. If, if you're interested in the group, just put hashtag group in the comments section. And I'm sharing the recipes there because I found on my Facebook feed, people were emailing me and um, it was just kind of harder to find things. So things are showing up recipe wise in, in there, easier to find. But here you can see we've got some gorgeous greens from the gardens yesterday, um, again, uh, this is something you could have a really yummy fresh salad. I usually just do a little bit of olive oil and lemon juice. And, um, you know, again, you have sort of a full meal. Sog is something we'll probably do on one of these lives. It's a bit longer, a little more involved. It's kind of a tricky dish. But um, this is a vegan, completely vegan sog. And again, this has a tofu paneer, which is a particular way of cooking the tofu. And then beautiful... Um, bright, brilliant, pureed greens, which I have a technique I learned from some of my earlier cooking days when I was studying more French cuisine. So again, this is a really fun uh, technique to sort of bring this quality to the greens. So we're going to have the paranta and the sag and the dal for lunch. Sounds about right, yeah? Okay, so if there aren't any questions, I think we're going to swing over, see how Dolly's doing, and then we're going to sign out for today and enjoy some lunch. So let's take a look. How's it going over here? Good. good. Doing pretty good? Yeah. We have a nice pile of beautiful, oh my goodness, everybody's going to be excited about this. So we've made four so far, but once she gets cooking, there's no stopping her. <laughs> So we'll just basically use up, so that two cups of cauliflower looks like it makes about five parantas, five or six probably. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. And how much, what would you consider the average person eats? Like how, how much do you eat, hun? <laughs> you could say it out loud. I'm like a three to four paranta, please. <laughs> Now, I myself can't do that much gluten. Uh, one is usually, I'm pretty full. So again, it just depends on the person and the love that's gone into the food and how excited the person to eat it is. But usually it's one to two um, is a normal <laughs> serving. <laughs> we come home and it's like, go be veranda, please. And of course, she's always so kind and always has it available for him. 
So there was a question of somebody. They asked if they can uh, get a tandoor here in the USA. Where did you get your tandoor from? Oh, uh, that was like uh, 25 years ago. We got the tandoor. Mm -hmm. That was in uh, in LA somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't remember where. So maybe you can check it online. Probably people can suggest looking online and uh, going to some of the more industrial Indian suppliers. Yeah, they can get it. Then they can maybe get it from there. Okay, so we had some questions about the farm. And so biodynamic farming, as uh, one of the participants illuminated, is a farming method that was so incredible. So if you're interested in it, I'm going to share some photos from our visit. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a blog post coming in the next day or two. But biodynamic farming is a way that allows for, oh, actually, let's try something, guys. We're going to get kind of creative here for a second. I think I'm going to be able to show you some photos from that trip. And um, if you're patient with us for a second, we'll be able to do that. Got, the phone got a little hot. And <laughs> it's a little cranky at the moment, but let's go through a couple of photos from the day. So here we are at the farm, and uh, we're going to just turn this camera on so I can show you some pictures. So again, these are some pictures from the time at the farm, and it was founded by um, Rudolf Steiner, who was a really a philosopher, a scientist who lived in, I believe, in the early 19th century. And biodynamics is a way of farming that's very synergistic with the earth. So you can see here, in between the aisles on the farm, they have clover. And clover allows for the microbiome of the soil to be better developed. It also allows for needing less water, allows for um, sort of nutrient fixation. So pretty incredible. And the farms are very, they do also appear very organic. You don't often find that they are, um, as manicured as typical farms. And so you can kind of get a sense here of some of the, the character of the farm. It was just a beautiful experience to kind of see all the different ways that the food can be combined. And I don't really have a uh, background in, in farming or you know, permaculture or holistic uh, farming, but I'm really excited about these principles as being a much more sustainable way for us to eat and live and so this was in um, near Watsonville. We can see here at California, this is echinacea growing. Um, this was the hoop farm. Pretty cool stuff, right? I mean, we start looking at um, all the qualities of how the earth is sort of combining here. It looks nothing like the perfection that we're used to. And I think this is something so important to kind of think about in these times. And we're gonna show you um, the zucchini that we got and I wanted to just sort of make a small point about something that came up when we were there. I of course was in seventh heaven if you can imagine look at how vibrant and colorful and beautiful everything is. Um, I believe this is borage but again I am not a I'm a novice gardener at best but I was just loving how vibrant how much vitality was coming off all of all the living components in this farm and um, Let's see here. You can just see, I was just having so much fun filming everything. It was so bright and brilliant. And um, you just get a sense here that it's not the way the farming that we're used to. It's not a method that's being used in mass agricultural production, but it's a different way of being in synergy with the earth, which feels very, very important to me right now. We're in sort of an unprecedented time. Um, hey, there's hubby can kind of see us enjoying the day. Um, this is artichoke. Again, artichoke is growing very robust, uh, robustly in this region. I'm gonna show you um, this beautiful patches of greens. So again, it was just so delightful to spend time on this farm. And um, here we see kale growing. So I was just gonna show you all cabbage. So take a look at that gorgeous cabbage. So they also make sauerkraut this farm, which is pretty amazing. And um, it's called Blossoms Biodynamic Farm, if you want to learn more about them. But I'm gonna just flip back to the camera here. I'm gonna show you. So one of the things that was so interesting when we were there is that the farmer told us that this zucchini that has this tiny little blemish on it isn't available to be sold. They can't actually market it in the produce market. 
And I actually thought this was pretty tragic because here's this beautiful piece of produce and we become so acclimated to needing perfection in our produce that this is not something they can sell. Now, I assume they have other outlets, but I would just encourage all of us to sort of embrace imperfection in our food and maybe even embrace some of the imperfections in ourselves. Because if there's anything that this time with COVID has really taught me is that, um, and you can tell that because if you watched my early COVID video, <laughs> They were much more organized, much more perfect. And I finally realized just with all the tech issues and all the integration of theories and ideas that the only way I was going to be able to keep doing these is if I sort of let go a little bit. And so, um, you know, again, this is something really interesting to think about. So let's conclude our class for today with just kind of a last look at, at what Dolly's doing. And we thank our, my husband here for the camera work. <laughs> Thank you. So grateful, Dolly. Thank you. And you're just mixing up the rest of that cauliflower, right? Yeah, we are. Yum. Yeah. This is going to be so good. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, again, thank you, everybody, for joining. And I don't think, let me just double check and see if there's any last questions. And I think that's going to do it for us for today. But again, um, stay tuned, because I've definitely been um, busy creating cooking classes and cooking curriculum. And of course, we'll keep up with these lives every Saturday at noon, just trying new things. And as long as I have the resource of this amazing North Indian cook here, I will be um, availing myself to new cooking techniques. I now know how to make gobi pranta at a very novice level, but somebody in the family, namely my husband, is <laughs> woohoo, he's very excited that that's now a skill I have. And um, we're going to be, I'll just be sharing more about some of the cooking that's to come in the, in the coming months. But if you're not part of the Facebook group, you can just put hashtag group and I'll make sure to send you an invite. I don't think it's searchable on Facebook because I wanted to sort of keep it oriented to people that might have a clinical background or people that I know. And I didn't want to sort of inundate everybody else with it either. So again, that's something exciting. And, we're going to just sign off today. I'm wishing everybody um, healthy, uh, relaxing kind of quality. And we're going to thank Dolly for all this time in the kitchen. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for watching. Yes, thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. I think that's it for us today. Reach out to me with any questions. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs>